the aisle. We don't know from one minute to the next what we're going to be voting on. And I'm reclaiming my time. The, the, the schedule has been changed on a moment's notice. And I'll tell you, even back in the shutdown of 1995, there was greater communication between the majority and the minority about what was going on. Um, in fact, you know, there was, you know, we had a lot of these small little bills that funded little pieces of the government. But the one thing the majority did is they granted the full House a vote on a, and what a clean resolution means is it only pertains to spending. It doesn't pertain to other policy issues. That vote was granted. The House Republicans voted it down. That was their position. But at least we had a vote. Okay? And then we also had a discussion about what we could fund during the shutdown. The complete and utter breakdown in communication between the majority party, the minority party, the Senate and the House, the White House and us is doing an unbelievable disservice to this country. I don't care if we get in a room and yell at each other for four hours. Let's at least have the communication because I want to really paint the picture here. We all have our talking points. And I heard all of those talking points this morning. I've heard them so much, and I'm sure that the American people and I are absolutely sick to death of those talking points. They're poll tested, they're wonderful, they play to the base, they're great, and here we are on day five going nowhere. The basic problem here, number one on the CR, is the health care policy issue. That basically the Republicans, this is no secret, want to get rid of the health care law. The trouble is they don't have the votes to do it and they are therefore willing to hold up the funding of the government in order to advance their policy agenda. And that's a very important point, because that, that plays into the larger issue. I also want to tell you that we are, what is it, 12 days now away from defaulting? And we are going to default at this point, because what I hear from my Republican colleagues is, oh, no, 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 we don't want to default. Um, you know, as long as we cut enough spending, as long as we do tax reform, we'll be fine. Which, of course, is what we've been hearing since January of 2011. And I just want to explain briefly to the American people what the difference in the positions are here. And I'm going to be as fair and honest as I can be. The Republicans believe strongly that we should severely cut spending. And cutting spending at this point means mandatory programs, entitlements. Because we've already cut discretionary spending down to the BCA level, down to the level that they agreed to. That's what some of my colleagues are referencing about the CR. The spending level is down there, but they don't want to do that. And, you know, the deficit is high, so they want to cut spending. And the president has on more than one occasion put entitlement cuts on the table. The difference of opinion is whether or not we should also raise taxes as part of that deal to deal with the deficit. The president, the Senate, Democrats in the House, which I realize is irrelevant because we don't have the votes, but unfortunately for you guys, they do in the Senate, and the president has the veto. If there's going to be any entitlement cuts, they have to be accompanied by tax increases. And the Republicans say, absolutely not. We're not going to do that. So that is the divide. And the problem is the Republicans won 234 seats in the House. Interestingly, they lost uh, the overall vote in Congress by a count of 52 to 48, but redistricting plays out the way it does. But they did not win the presidency, and they did not win the Senate. So they were trying to take those 234 votes in the House and jam their broader agenda down everybody's throat. And, and the piece that they have is they are willing to not fund the government and not raise the debt ceiling in order to put us in a bad position to do that. And I'll tell you, Democrats cannot vote to cut entitlements if there are not tax increases attached to them. So I hope somebody somewhere <clears throat> wakes up to this reality before we default and stops insisting that somehow, miraculously, in the next 12 days, Democrats are going to magically agree to cut entitlements with no revenue and maybe do some big complicated tax reform bill that cuts taxes even further. Because if that reality does not set in, we are in for several weeks of great calamity that's going to cause greater damage than what has been caused here. So with that, I support the resolution. I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman from Washington.